Around the 1960s, the era of colonialism came to an end, as the resistance movement against the foreign occupiers intensified in the colonized lands. Independence followed for most of these nations, but they remained and still remain under the effective control of major world powers. In this sense, the existence of neo-colonialism, in which Western domination was maintained through indirect economic means instead of political or military means, is clear to most people of the formerly colonized countries. However, did such influence have its roots based upon unfinished colonial relationships? Or did it originate from fundamentally new post-war circumstances? Most of the formerly colonized countries were in poor economic statuses following their independence. This was due to the fact that colonial nations mainly focused on efficiently exploiting resources within these lands. Many formal colonies, especially in Africa, were dependent on one or few cash crops that were chosen by their formal masters, which meant that when prices of these crops fluctuated or dropped, the economy of these nations experienced trouble. In addition, as they concentrated on primary products such as crops or natural resources, most of these countries had their modern sectors of technology and manufactured goods dependent mainly on imports from the West. The prices of these secondary products arose rapidly compared to those of the primary products, which led formal colonies to suffer from trade deficit. International trades based upon trade liberalization policies aggravated this situation. Aggressive actions were taken by international organizations such as the WTO or the IMF to reduce the tariff barriers and liberate flow of goods around the world. However, unlike developed nations, which had economic capacity to protect their domestic agricultural markets by providing massive subsidies, poor nations in Africa or Asia, which have recently been decolonized, were not able to do so. As this vicious cycle continued, formerly colonized countries did not have sufficient time to build up their own economies to escape the poverty trap, and the gap between the rich and the poor nations increased. Since no relationship can be fulfilled from one side, this issue, which involves the ongoing colonial relationships between nations, cannot be solved by only the efforts of formal colonies. Rather, it is a problem that should be discussed and resolved by both sides, moreover, the entire globe.